on one of everybody's favorite days in the world of sports. One of the best traditions around. The NFL Draft is here. It's draft week. It's going to be a great week. We are now previewing the NFL Draft with the productive NFL crew. Well, at least uh, two of them VPs in it at the moment. Just kidding. Just kidding. They're, um, me and Hayden Nather are here, and we are going to preview the NFL Draft. What's up, Hayden? What's up, uh, Matt? How are you? Excellent, man. Great, great to see you. The two Alexes are out doing vigilante work, so we will see them on Thursday. So, and that's the big thing we've been promoting this Thursday, live on YouTube at Productive Conversations or search Productive Conversations or Productive Conversations Podcast on the YouTube search bar. And at 8 p.m. on Thursday night, we are live streaming the entire first round of the NFL Draft from start to finish all of the first 32 picks, and you're going to see our live reactions to the big news, the trades that are going to happen, and uh, hopefully some legitimate NFL history. So don't forget to check that out on Thursday at 8 p.m. on the Productive Conversations podcast YouTube channel. And then after that, we will do it all. We will transfer the audio and make a podcast out of that. But Hayden, the NFL draft is here. We're in the middle of some great playoff runs, both in the NHL and NBA. But it seems that on this particular day, the NFL is king because not only is it is the draft, not only is it draft week, but it was announced today that it is official. Aaron Rodgers is going to the New York Jets. He has been traded. Let me get the trade details officially. But Aaron Rodgers is going to be the quarterback of the New York Jets. And in that deal, one, two, three, two, two, three. Man, it's so silly when it just slips on my mind. But um, the trade, according to this, the great Adam Schefter and the deal made. Just one second. Because uh, this is very dire and we have to get this right. So in the deal... We have Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets, and they're going to swap the 15th and 13th overall pick in this year's draft. The Jets will get a fifth rounder in 2023 as well in this year's draft. And the Packers get the 13th overall pick, a 2023 second rounder, a sixth round pick in the 2023 draft as well, and a conditional second round pick that becomes a first if Aaron Rodgers plays 65% of the plays. But it seems like that most likely is going to happen and that um, next year's first will go to the Green Bay Packers. But let's say it. Let's find out. Everybody needs to know what Hayden thinks. Hayden, what do you think of Aaron Rodgers officially becoming the New York Jets quarterback? I, mean, I, I think he's going to be great. I mean, but like until – I mean, you've seen this with Brett Favre with the Jets. So until we really see that, um, you know, the results on paper, you know, you can't really say anything until, until you actually see what he does on the field. Um, that being said – I've shit on Joe Douglas. I think he's the most overrated GM in NFL history. I, I do honestly believe that. Mm-hmm. But that being said, this was um this was a fantastic deal that he made. Like this deal in particular was very good in terms of the compensation they gave up. Um, I didn't feel like they gave up too much to get him for for a guy who just won an MVP two years ago. Um, if they can even get any some semblance of of great quarterback play, I think they're going to be pretty good this year. Do you think it was worth the long what? It had to be a solid six weeks since he announced his intentions to go to I mean, the Jets at Pat but, McAfee. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it did get done before the draft. So, I mean. I right, yeah, I was really surprised. For a little bit, but that being said, um, I mean, it's a great deal right now, 100%. But that being said, we've seen great deals in the offseason that turned out to be horrible ones when the season starts. So, this is a – I mean, this is a really – Put up or shut up for Aaron Rodgers. If you really think you're the best, come to New York and prove it. Yeah, um, right. Put up or shut up move. Um, but I mean, if he doesn't play well, this could alter his legacy. So, you know, this is a really risky move. He's really going all in on himself. Um, but you know, uh, the the Jets did go for it. You can't say Joe Douglas didn't go for it this year. Um, whether or not he succeeds or not is up to is to be determined. But um. You know, do you feel um, that um the Jets kind of caved 
you know, some people said that they finally started negotiating no, this past no, weekend. No, I don't think they gave up. I feel like they, what they gave up was pretty fair. Actually, I don't feel like they gave up too much. I don't. Really? I feel like it's a pretty fair, fair deal. Now, you know, this is his chance to prove you wrong too, Hayden. I know you have been a, a, a passionate critic of Joe Douglas, but now that he seems to finally do the one thing he did wrong in drafting quarterback. Down, Rogers, that's different but like you you gotta have you gotta at least make the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers if you don't he's gone next year I mean without a question and he should be but you know we'll see I I think it's gonna come back to hurt us the fact that he we don't have a backup quarterback I I really really think that's gonna come back to hurt us getting we don't right trust right. I do not I did not like that move um mm -hmm. the guy is not 20 years old anymore he's 40 um his health is you know gonna be a question and we're gonna be have a there's a chance that it's very hard for quarterbacks to play all 16 games in this league. It is. Um, it's rare. So, I mean, you need a good QB2 in the room, which is, you know, Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson doesn't exactly inspire confidence in, as your QB, QB2 and three. Um, <laughs> so you feel a little you know, bit of a better option, but um, that being said, we'll see. I think this is going to be the best thing that ever happened for Zach Wilson. He can, he can learn under, under uh, Wilson – under uh, Rogers' tutelage, I think it's going to be pretty good for him. And then maybe he plays well in a backup role, and there could be a trade value for him if they feel like. Uh, hey, Zach like Wilson, him. Zach Wilson should be motivated. He said he is going to make that team a live. It. He's going to make that quarterback who takes his spot a live live a living hell, and it turns out to be one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it. <laughs> no, that I mean he's going to support. Uh, Zach Wilson, so you know, um, you know Wilson and and Rogers, they have a good relationship, which is good. So, um, you know, it's good. Definitely, definitely an exciting time, and yeah, now your team's going to be on prime time. There's probably going to get six prime time games. Six? I heard you're getting eight. Eight as much as eight. I thought the I th I thought the max was was uh, six. I, mean, I, but, I uh, hear that. I hear that almost as many as eight. That's what I hear. But um, you know, want to be a surprise. But now um, your team is going to get some respect. And do you feel the Jets are in a, the top tier of the AFC now by this one move? Um, like I said, it, it it's hard for me to say. Um, we'll see. I do feel like they're one. They should be one of the top six teams in the AFC with Rodgers at quarterback. But like I said, we've seen it in the past where teams have great quarterbacks and they just don't win for a variety of different reasons. Um, the line has to be better. Uh, special teams has to be a little bit better than it was last year, and we're gonna see. And they got the offense has to stay healthy. If Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson and and the guys can't stay healthy, I mean, who who cares? Brees Hall towards ACL this year. He's no guarantee to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we could talk this deal all day, but we have a whole draft to get through. And why don't we start that right here, right now? We can hit more on the Jets when it's their turn in the rotation. But, yep, this is how it's going to work, going through all 32 teams by their draft order. And we'll simply highlight who should stay, who should go in terms of what's each team should do, and uh, we'll see what these other teams are thinking ultimately. So we'll start with the Carolina Panthers. They have the first overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. They acquired this pick by making a trade with Chicago, who originally had the first overall pick. They traded a bunch of assets, including DJ Moore, and uh, Chicago will now be picking 10th as Carolina is picking number one. Carolinas has a whole new has a whole new coaching staff. They have a brand new coach, Tuck, and um, Frank Reich is your head coach of the Carolina Panthers. And uh, you know this is a quarterback draft that is of note this year. They you can make an argument that this is the Big Four, and the big question is out of the Big Four, who's going to be picked first? And is it going to be the favorite at the moment, which is Bryce Young? Hayden, do you think Bryce Young is the first overall pick in the 2023 um, NFL Yes, draft? I do. By all indications, Bryce Young is going to be his first overall pick. Um, I don't love his size, but everything else besides that has been proven to be great. 
He has great uh, field awareness and visibility in the pocket. Um, you can see he really scans the field really well. He processes things really well, which I think will help with um, his height deficiency. We've seen quarterbacks in the past not have not be the tallest and be very successful. Drew Brees, for example. Um, there have been guys who have not been the tallest quarterbacks to succeed in the league. Um, but, I mean, Bryce Young's – everything that Bryce Young does pops off the charts. I don't really feel like he has the base arm necessarily. Um, I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, um, Steve Young, Steve Young wasn't the base guy. Um, there's been plenty of quarterbacks who weren't. Tony Romo wasn't the base guy either. Um, so Russell Wilson's a Hall of Famer. He's he's five eleven. Joe Eisenman was six feet. Fran talked to him six feet. So I mean, height height really is just a number. Um, I, I the the thing with Bryce Young is he doesn't really like. He's not a very flashy quarterback. He's not like a guy who has the biggest arm or the greatest legs. But um, I feel like if you want a guy who's a true leader, I feel like he's the best selection in this draft. Mm, so you think he's the one? You don't think Carolina's going to go crazy? And, you know, the other big names, whether it's a uh, Bryce, we have Bryce Young, we have CJ Stroud, Will Levis out of Kentucky, Anthony Richardson out of Florida. You think that um Bryce Young is the one to earn this spot? Um, I think Bryce Young is the is the is the safest choice. I feel like he has the. I don't think he has the highest ceiling, but I think he has the 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 best floor. Like I I feel like he's going to be pr- pretty productive in the league. Okay, Carolina. okay. As a team that's honestly been looking for a quarterback for God knows how long since they got rid of Cam Newton, um, I do feel like uh, this selection would be the safest selection. That being said, sometimes the safest selection doesn't always yield the biggest dividends. I don't really feel like he has the upside of quarterbacks like like CJ Stroud, um, Levis, or or uh, Anthony Richardson for that matter. Um, mm-hmm. I even feel like there's another quarterback quarterback in the draft that I feel like people are under, under are looking. That's pretty good actually. Um, I actually like this guy from. I want to say it was, like, I want to say it's. I actually my favorite quarterback in the draft personally is Hendon Hooker. That's who I feel like is is actually my favorite quarterback in the entire draft. Um, but I I don't know I. I really don't know. I feel like Bryce Young is going to be a solid player in this league, but I feel like uh, the other quarterbacks do would definitely have a higher upside than Bryce Young. All right, some excellent stuff, and we could go through, um, we could go into it as we get into more of these teams. Picking number two overall is the Houston Texans, and the big question there is: Are they going to pick a quarterback with their new regime, or are they going to go uh, defense? Yeah, I think they're going to pick a quarterback. Um, Honestly, I, I feel like they're gonna pick C.J. Stroud. That's what I feel like. C.J. Stroud's the you biggest so. quarterback in the. He's the biggest quarterback in the draft. Probably has the most talent. Um, he has accuracy. He's he was a monster at. At Ohio State, um, I mean he showed up in the biggest games. You can't really say that C.J. Stroud didn't, uh, didn't show up. So I don't know. I, I feel like all this bullshit with his S two test that it wasn't high or whatever is a bunch of fucking nonsense. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you actually knew Frank Gore scored like a five on the Wonderlick and he's a Hall of Fame running back, one of the greatest running backs of all time. So I mean, there's plenty of players who did score great in the Wonderlick. Uh, Lamar Jackson didn't have a high score in that. So that's all bullshit. I mean, listen, people will, will say all this stuff about tests. If you can't make the throw, you can't make the throw. Doesn't matter how. Doesn't matter how uh, how smart or how. How smart you are! If you can't make exactly throw, you can't make like it's it's simple at the end of the day. It's it's really not that hard. If Tom Brady couldn't make all these throws, he wouldn't be the greatest quarterback ever. Like there is amount of talent that has to go into it. No matter how much you want to say about hard work and and uh, anticipation of reads, snap counts, uh, re- looking at the pocket awareness, uh, field visibility. I mean, you still have to make the throw regardless. No matter how much you can see the field. Yeah, and they could go defense in there. They're also picking twelfth. And, um, yeah, I figure that's true, you know, about these Wonderlick tests and Wonderlick scores. It's not about – It's not – this isn't know. a Wonderlick test. This is more like a conceptual – this is a little bit of a different test, um, the S2 test. But that but regardless said, of the test, the tests don't matter. Like you said, yeah, it's about yeah. what you do on the field. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't matter if you have a $250,000 um, – why am I saying $250,000? If you're just a, 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 a genius and stuff, you know – you're fine. And uh, Houston, with their new regime, with a defensive-minded coach, you still think um, with these big four, 
they probably shouldn't pass on one of them, especially if they're trying to rebuild. And they never really had a quote unquote, you know, star quarterback with the exception of Deshaun Watson. We know what happened with him. Um, his legacy is definitely up in the air. But they should probably do their best to get a solid franchise quarterback, wouldn't you think? Yeah. I exactly. uh, I agree. Um, I feel like Houston's going to take Stroud. That's what I feel like they're going to take. Um, they also have needs, though, at edge rusher, D-line, center, mm-hmm. wide receiver, safety, and linebacker. So that really – I mean – I don't. I feel like they're um they're gonna take C. D. Stroud. That's what I think they're gonna take. Um, and then I feel like uh the Colts are gonna take Will Levis. But that being said, in terms of the quarterback who has the highest upside, probably I would say the most pro ready quarterback in terms of the most pro ready style that has just like the typical C. D. Stroud kind of plays a little bit like Ben Roethlisberger in my opinion. Um, that's kind of the the mold kind of fits into a little bit. Um, so that being said, that's what he kind of reminds me of. Bryce Young kind of reminds me a little bit more of Drew Brees. Okay, okay. And, you know, I've heard, you know, it seems when there's this quarterback class, it seems that one of them slips inevitably. This is, Whether it's like a Jalen Hurts going in the second round and Lamar Jackson late in the first. I mean, and some people is, I've heard that C.J. Strout could be the one who is going down, whether it's his attitude I mean, off the field, you know, um, if he allegedly uh, skipped out on the Manning camp, uh, the Manning quarterback camp, I don't know how much that's a factor is. You know, stranger things have happened, but despite all that, you still think that CJ Stroud should be drafted higher. Yeah, I do. I think CJ Stroud should be drafted too. Okay, okay. And if we are going to switch although, it up, a little... although no. if I'm being completely honest with you, um, I feel like Henry Hooker is almost just as good. And Hayden Hooker. Um, Hooker, you were, Hooker I'm sorry. Tennessee. That's actually my favorite Penn quarterback State. in the draft. That's my favorite quarterback in the draft right now, Hayden Hooker. Why do you think he hasn't got as much buzz as the other four? I mean, it's a little tough to say. He was also playing for Tennessee in SEC school. Um, He's also a little bit older, which could be why. Hayden Hooker right he now. Got hurt. He got hurt. Didn't he get he hurt? Got hurt. Yeah, year? he got hurt. Hayden Definitely. Hooker right now is 25 years old, so they feel like, I mean, paying for a guy who's wow, already 25. That's old. He's a little bit old for a uh, – for a guy in the draft, a little bit old. But that being said, he was able to accumulate experience. Um, mm-hmm. It's hard to say, though, because you're going to go as a 24-year-old playing against 18 and 19-year-olds year old, playing in the NFL. Um, it's a very big jump. But that being said, out of all the quarterbacks I saw from college, um, Henry Hooker was the best out of, out of the three. Like, he would have won the Heisman if he didn't get hurt, in my opinion. This guy last year in 11 games played through for uh, 3,135 yards, 27 touchdowns, and two picks. And – Literally, and not even kidding you, in the last two years, this guy has thrown 58 touchdowns and five picks playing in the yeah. SEC versus Bama's, versus uh, Kentucky's. Versus Those Old NFL Kentucky. caliber defenses. I mean, he has the best numbers by far out of any quarterback in the draft. I, I think they're, they're probably even better than Bryce Young's. So if I have a quarterback who I feel like is the most ready in terms of playing versus SEC offenses week in and week out, who's most acclimated to the NFL, you could argue that Henry Hooker is just as acclimated to the NFL as Bryce Young is. I, I feel like he's better than Bryce Young. Really? And if there's probably one quarterback I would like... bet, if there's one quarterback I would bet to be a pro bowler in this draft, it would be Henry Hooker. Oh, man. We'll keep you to that as I'm writing these notes to make sure people don't miss out. Um, yeah, and it seems that if Hooker didn't get hurt, Maybe his draft stock would be a lot higher, but you still think you he's still the one. And um, yeah, let's get that on camera. Let's get the on our mics. Hendon Hooker, we have a lot of support for in this draft. I mean, yeah, that, if I was the Jets and they didn't have Rodgers, I would say the Jets should have took him at 13. I would have even gone that hard, even to go that high, say the Jets should take him. All right, all right. Now that if we are going to switch it up with the quarterback talk, we have the Arizona Cardinals, who uh, seem to be just a mess as a franchise. They definitely don't need to get a quarterback. They have Kyle Murray long term, but is this an opportunity to improve on their defense? Yeah, um, I mean, right now they're going to go an edge rusher. They're going to go. Um, they're going to take uh, Will Anderson Jr. That's what that's what the draft Alabama. I feel like with Jonathan Gannon as a defensive coach coming for uh, they just hired him for Philly, the DC for for Philadelphia. Now now the Arizona Cardinals new coach. Um, they're right. definitely going to go D lineman. 
Man, do you question. think I, I would be shocked if they didn't pick a? I mean, they're probably getting a D line or O line. That being said, when you get an offensive coach, um, I mean, if you have a defensive coach, they I I feel like they're gonna take Will Anderson Jr. But that being said, I'm also in reports that they uh they want to upgrade the offensive line. So, I mean, what what they could do is trade back and take an O line. Man, that's what that's what they could do. So, I mean. The best lineman right now is this guy Pierce Bronski from uh Northwestern. Northwestern. Yeah, he's a big old lineman. Um, like pretty said, much, pretty much Arizona could take any of these guys. Yeah, pretty much Arizona has so many needs they take any of these guys. But I feel like the consensus pick right now is Blue Anderson Jr. But we'll see. I feel like that's a team that could actually could move up, move down. Okay. I mean, okay, I like it. I like it. And um, you also met we if we went to the fifth overall pick, sorry, the fourth overall pick in the Indianapolis Colts. You think Will Levis is yes, a favorite I, I into like this? If he could get picked in there. By the, um, he's going to go to the Colts. That's what that's what I think. Um, Colts have been looking for that kind of prototypical body, kind of like a uh, Pete Manning. A little bit. They kind of like they like Will Levis' size. They love his upside. They love the cannon he has. Um. I'm just concerned he's going to be a little bit like a previous quarterback they've had, Jeff Jeff George, who had a ton of upside and talent but never was able to uh, bring it fully together. Um, I feel like they're going to have to work a lot with him. Their coach right now for Indianapolis, I mean, considering they just got rid of um, – they just got rid of um, – Jeff Saturday had him as the interim right now. Um, Shane right. stepped in the OC for um, Philly. They hired, so – um. I mean, we're going to see. We're going to see if it's a product for the offense at Philadelphia or if we really can turn this the Colts into a thriving offensive unit because their, their offense has been awful um, the last couple of years. I see, yes. And they have a long way to go in improving this team. You know, one team that um, is picking high, the Seattle Seahawks, this is a result of the Denver-Russell Wilson deal, and Seattle's going number five. You know, one thing I've heard in the rumblings and to stay on the quarterback talk, maybe the Seahawks pick the quarterback of the future. Despite Geno Smith having a stellar comeback season, literally winning comeback player of the year, um, they only signed him for a one-year deal. He is older, and if for some reason it doesn't pan out, do you think this is a case, whether it's Hendon Hooker or the other quarterbacks we talked about, that this could be a quarterback pick for Seattle or do you think they um they this is a chance to improve their line, get some protection for Geno, or if they want to get go get a um you know they have some issues missing with um their defensive backs this is a chance to get them. How about uh, the Seahawks in this case? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, what really good thing about um what they're talking about right now is that um. They're saying that Anthony Richardson could be in play for Pete Carroll in Seattle. Hmm. Um, I don't feel like they're going to take Anthony Richardson. I don't. I feel like it's way too early for to take Anthony Richardson too high, too much of a project. I don't know. I mean, I would consider taking a linebacker here if I was Seattle. That's what. I, that's what. I, that's what I would consider taking. Um, I feel like they need a good linebacker. But okay, okay. Take on it. I like that. I like that. And. How about with the Detroit Lions, though? They're going to pick number six and also picking 18th in this draft thanks to the Jared Goff deal. Do you think this is a time to add to their defense that was improving? You know, everyone said that last year the Lions' problem was their defense. It proved towards the end, but it was a little too late. doesn't seem like they need to add more to the um, offense. Um this is a good chance to improve their defense. Do you think this could be a noble move? You know, one of the best players in the draft is Jalen Carter, but we know he had some uh, legal issues or he's under some legal issues, allegedly being part of a fatal car accident that he may or may not have um, been a part of with the street racing and stuff. But do you think this could be a risk? I don't know. I feel like the Lions would be a team to take a risk like this. And do you think it's even worth it? Um, I mean, I think we're going to see, um, you could see, I feel like they need a, 
a corner since they just got rid of uh, Jeff Okuda, especially their spots can open there in the secondary. So mm-hmm. I feel like they're gonna. I feel like the Lions getting corner here. Uh, one of the best corners right now are uh, Christian Gonzalez and Devin Witherspoon, the two guys I really really like. So um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, okay, okay. I like it. Joey I like Porter it. Jr. from uh, he's from Penn State. He had a pretty good career as a corner. So I mean, we'll see. We're gonna. I think they're gonna take a corner right here. If I Christian my gut, Gonzalez, another um, one from uh, Oregon, could be a possibility. Yeah, my uh, my gut them is that they're gonna take um, they're gonna take Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. That would be my gut. Okay, and if we continue and speak on the Las Vegas Raiders, who are gonna pick number seven? You know, they had a mess of a season towards the end. Um, they're going to go with the new regime. Maybe the Jimmy G era is about to start. You think maybe this is a good chance to get some protection for him in this sense? I think that's where they should go. They really need to get some protection for him, whether that is a, you know, if you want to go with Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State or, you know, any of the other options on the O-line. Could this be a chance for them right. to watch, get some? I'm, I'm honestly going to give it a big name here. Um, watch for Jackson Smith and Jabba right here. Really? Tell yeah. us more. Watch for him. Um, I feel like he, the, the Raiders may have really, really uh, – they just gave away Darren Waller, who's one of their best pass catchers. Um, mm-hmm. with Devontae Adams. Imagine pairing Devontae Adams with, uh, with um, Ninjaba. That would be the best one-two combo in the league. Mm, so you I'm say they're about, getting weapons. Something right to think away. about. Um, it may not be the uh most need that they have for uh the Las Vegas Raiders, but that being said, it would be a unbelievable addition to the team. Um, everyone wants them to draft the corner. Um, but that being said, sometimes teams go based off of who's the best player available, not not their positional need. Mm-hmm. Uh, positional need, they should draft the corner one hundred percent. But um, just imagine an offense with with Devontae Adams and, and Jackson Smith and Java. I don't think they're gonna do that. I think they will draft a corner, but be on the lookout for them to draft someone, shock shock the rest of the league and take a wide receiver really here. Okay, okay. And when it comes to the next team that is picking, and the Atlanta Falcons picking at eight, what do you think they should do? Oh, they should take uh, Bijan right here. Bijan. So Bijan, you yeah. say they pick uh, Bijan, the um, running, running back, back out of Texas. Texas. Yeah. They should take Bijan, um, develop that young core, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Bijan, um, get some more playmakers maybe. Um, it's That's the move I would make if I was Atlanta. I mean, I think they may even have to trade up to get him because I feel like one of these top – I feel like he may even be picked before uh, eight. So. You're we'll not worried about – I also think you got to take him because Philly's got number 10. And nobody wants to see Bijan in the Eagles jersey with, with mm-hmm. um, Bijan with with Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, um, Dallas Goddard in that offense. I don't feel like I feel like teams are almost going to block the Eagles from taking Bijan. So um, Atlanta may get a little bit desperate here and take Bijan Robinson. That that's that would be a great move in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily confident uh, with. Desmond Ritter is their quarterback. Still doesn't show me enough. Me neither. That being said, um, I feel like they're going to take a quarterback later in the draft and still give give Ritter a year to prove himself. You're not worried about picking a running back so high in the draft now? You know, we've seen this happen with Zeke. Saquon, the um, jury's still out, but if he did not redeem himself, that second overall pick looked really bad. But do you have any hesitation in that sense or – Still go for it in the first round. I mean, if you got a talent that good in the top ten pick, I mean, you got to take him. You can't let a talent that great go. Um, I I actually wouldn't agree with you on Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott had a couple of great years for um the, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, but he, don't you he, think he towards the end it turned into a complete mess? You know, he never was that. You know, the way they were explaining him, he would go like get five All Pros. And leading them to deep playoff runs. I mean, he had. Th- I mean, he had Pro Bowl three times. He was an All Pro in 2016, second team All Pro in 2018. I mean, he was a really good player. I mean, I I, I feel like I would have took that if you would have told me a running back would make three Pro Bowls, make an All Pro twice. 
I mean, if you told me that for a running back in this day and age, I would have took that. But um, even though he's not on the team anymore, five years later, six years later. Yeah, no, you have a point. Um, but it's just like I said, it's very hard to stay in this league as a running back for a sustained period of time. Um, and and yeah, yeah you're, you're right to have some some uh some reservations about it. But like I said, if you're a player that great, you can't just avoid it because it's just there's certain doubts about his position and longevity. There's doubts at longevity in every position. There's doubts at quarterback. There's there's doubts at offensive linemen. You know, many players aren't healthy. They're supposed to be great players a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily it's 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 a running back specific problem. I think it's an NFL problem more more so than a running back problem. All right, all right. I hear you. Valid points. Now, when it comes to the Chicago Bears, though, you know, really revamping, trying to get, um, you know, trying to take the next step, showing a little promise towards the end of the season. Or at least with Justin Fields, you could be a little more confident. What do you have to do to make his life a little easier? Um, I mean, yeah, it's this is a tough one again. Um, I mean, they're they're really going all in with Justin Justin Fields. So, um, you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I do actually. I mean, he he really did great. Um, that being said, their defense was pretty atrocious last year. He was putting up thirty points routinely, and they were still. It was mm-hmm. still, still bad. That being said, if you're a Chicago Bears fan, you are <coughs> through the moon. You don't have to face Aaron Rodgers twice a year. Nope. For all your big cats out there, who's happy? I and mean, all you're versing that. right now. You're versing Jared. Then you're versing Jared Goff, Jordan Love, uh, and Kirk Cousins. So it's it's much better than facing Aaron Rodgers twice a year. So yeah, right. It is gonna be okay. And with the reigning champion. Philadelphia Eagles picking I at mean, ten. Yeah, we didn't really talk about who I think they're going to take from the Chicago Bears. Um, in terms. Of- oh, excuse me. I'm sorry about that. But for the Bears, though, I, um, what do you think they should do? Um, the Bears right here. It's going to be a tough call for me. Um, I actually think they should take a lineman for uh, for um, Justin Fields. Hmm. Whether that's like maybe a Broderick Jones from Georgia could be the one, or Denell Wright from Tennessee, um, I think so too. And especially with Justin Fields, and you know, using his leg, we've seen his legs being an ultimate factor. Need to make sure he stays on the field that way, and the better protection, the better the chances for the Bears. Now transferring back to the Eagles, reigning champions. For a team that had so much momentum and losing a tough Super Bowl, what do you have to do with your new coordinators and um, a much more wealthy Jalen Hurts? All right, this pick is going to shock people, um, but I'll say it right now: um, watch for the uh, watch for the Eagles to select Jalen Carter at that pick. So you say Jalen Carter is the one to go there. They're the ones I mean, taking the is, risk. That's a really like shock, but um, either Jalen Carter or Jameer Gibbs. Um, I and feel like they're going to be add looking, to those pass rushes that were so lethal. They're going to be looking for a really, really high impact player, and you can never have too many pass rushers, as the Eagles have announced. Have the Eagles not announced? Have the Eagles have shown throughout the years? Um, so they had the most sacks in NFL history, I believe, last year through the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Me if I'm wrong on that, there was a stat on that. Um, but I am hearing. I think they're either going to go Jalen Carter or Jimmy o. Gibbs. Okay, okay. And Jimmy you still Gibbs don't have any – if you're an Eagles fan, you don't worry about the legal issues. I mean, I think you take a chance. I mean, but, I mean, Jimmy or Gibbs, you also pair him with uh, with another running back, and they also they also lost Miles Sanders to Eagles, so they feel like they're going to be taking a, a running back here. So Jimmy or Gibbs would be, would be um, the guy to take. Okay. Now, when it comes to the Tennessee Titans – does it seem they have folded and are in rebuild mode? I still think they have a chance. Obviously, with Derrick Henry, you could still you get anything's possible. I have heard trade rumors with him, but if you're the uh, Tennessee Titans, what should you do? I personally think this is a good chance to get a quarterback. Ryan Tannenhill is not the one. Um, I feel like they're going to be the team to take Anthony Richardson. Yeah, I think that's a better shot think- here. It seems like the Malik Willis. Experiment is not going to work out. He did not look really good when he yeah, no, started. I, I have to admit, I, I feel like um, 
I feel like they're going to take uh, Anthony Richardson right here. And you think they will try to – do you think as long as Derrick Henry's on the roster, the Tennessee Titans are always going to try to compete? Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy that they already lost faith in, in Malik Willis um, after one year. Yeah, right. Um, I'm reading a report right now saying that they, um, they're they going to take a quarterback, uh, but the fact that they're already giving up on Malik Willis is pretty shocking. Mm-hmm. It's just really – he was – he was really pretty brutal when he played. He only completed fifty percent of his passes through three yeah. games and no touchdowns. I mean, he was he was pretty uh pretty undesirable. But that being said, um, I mean, if you want to develop him, maybe. But I mean, they're gonna draft the quarterback here, so I feel yeah. like got the best quarterback to take. Uh I would I would take Hennon Hooker over, over Anthony Richardson, but. Mm-hmm. Um, teams love Anthony Richardson's upside, and I feel like he's a big boom and bust guy. Uh, but for me, I'm taking I'm taking uh, Hendon Hooker at eleven. Okay, and yeah, I think if Tennessee doesn't have a hot start, you trade Derrick Henry during the trade deadline and uh, put him with a contender, and you know start your rebuilding process from there. And maybe you know in the later rounds they could pick up a running back or two or sign one and uh, see where they go from there. Now, for a team that definitely seems to be rebuilding, confirming it in their deal today, picking at 13th, is the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Jordan Love era has begun. What's the first step in improving that team? They're going to take a wide receiver at 2023. They're going to do, they're really? gonna do for Jordan Love what they didn't do for um... Aaron Rodgers, get yeah. him all the weapons he needed. Yeah, or they're, they're going to take uh, – I what did I say? Who – who did I say could be a sleeper? The Raiders could be a sleeper to get uh, Jackson Smith and G- Ninjiba. Mm-hmm. This is this is where I think he's gonna go. Like if I had to put money, I, I think uh, I would think um, the Pack is gonna take Ninjiba. All right. And as for the New England Patriots, though, I really thought for a second that Lamar Jackson was gonna be the one landing over there. But it seems after signing Odell Beckham Jr. And despite all the drama, which let's be thankful there's a little break of, from it right now, seems like Lamar Jackson is going to stay. And it seems like the Patriots, despite, you know, making all these cap decisions and moving things around, that um the Patriots are going to go with Mac Jones, even though I don't think he should get another chance. But if you are going to stick with Mac Jones... When you're Bill Belichick and you now see that your division has got exceptionally harder, what do you do to try to compete with these top teams in your division now? Um, I feel like they're going to take Roger Jones, the offensive tackle out of Georgia. Um, Roger they, Jones. Uh, they have to replace Isaiah Wynn. So um, they already have uh, Trent Brown on, on the right side. So Roger Jones is on the left side to provide uh, some stability for the offensive line for New England. Definitely, definitely. Now this should be fun for you. The New Jersey, the fuck. Whoa, why am I saying this? The team that plays in New Jersey, known as the New York Jets, are going to be picking fifteenth. Oh, they are gonna. They're all on board for an offensive tackle. Going offensive they're tackle. Gonna take, uh, they're gonna take Peter Skaronski. Peter Skaronski. That's who the Jets gonna take. Or they're gonna either take him, or they're gonna take. Uh, who the offensive tackles in the draft? They're gonna take Strong to get at uh at um oh. fifteen. All right, I like the sound of that. Um, then we go after the Jets. We have the Washington Commanders. They're in an interesting spot. Seems that ownership is about to change hands. But we wonder if that's going to affect them in any way, shape, or form. Um. Yeah. I mean, they're they're really, really um. They're gonna they're they're going with Sam Howell, a quarterback. Um. Very questionable know, decision. Very questionable. But I mean, you know, the guy had proved last year that he could play a little bit. Um. He had one throw over Dallas that was the best throw, the furthest throw all season. I want to say it traveled about 65 yards in the air. It was an absolute bomb to Terry McLaurin. So the, the, the upside is definitely there when he plays. Is he going to be consistent? That's the question. Um, 
So, yeah, that's a tough really selection who I feel like what they're going to take right there. I'm going by draft needs. They have, they have a ton of draft needs right there. Um, I feel like they're going to go uh, Joey Corner Jr. Joey Porter Jr. at Penn State. Okay. The cornerback, they have a big need at corner. Um, so that's what I feel like they're going to take. Yeah, definitely. They, 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 you know, you have a good coach. You know, I think the commanders can't figure it out if they have it, you know, everything together. But uh, we'll ultimately see. And we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, they just added Allen Robinson. They were able to get a winning record. And um, despite all the mess that was going on in the Steelers, Kenny Pickett, his first full season as the starting quarterback. What do the Steelers do? Um, yeah, definitely a different, difficult team to uh, difficult team to to pick for. Um, one of the teams, uh, J- TJ Watt last year was hurt. He's still kind of coming off an injury. Um, I feel like they're going to take a a linebacker here. Mm. That's what I feel like they're going to take. Um, personally, they're like an edge rusher. Um, so I feel like one of the Player they're gonna select um one of the best edge rushers I feel like they're gonna select in the draft. So all that's, right, that's really who I think they're gonna take. Uh, just give me a second. I'm just gonna tell you who I think they're gonna pick. Yeah, do do that. You know, um, you know, with the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. It seems that this season, if ultimately has proven that Mike Tomlin really can make something out of nothing. And as long as he gets the right players in there, they can compete one way or the uh, other. I feel like they're going to take uh, Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith? Yep. And where's he from? Uh, Nolan Smith. He is from... Nolan Smith from Georgia. Okay, Nolan Smith from Georgia. Yes. The um, reigning national champions seem to have a lot of love for the Georgia Bulldogs I'm also hearing coming the in. Jets could target him and the Jets and the Eagles could target him. So this could be a position where maybe the Steelers move up if they like him enough. All right. Picking at 19 is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, Detroit is picking at 18. You know, we discussed what um, they could do. But um, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield is your quarterback, you know, trying to... Uh, live a life post Tom Brady. Now, what can they do with uh, still a lot of veterans still on that team at the moment? But um, obviously we think there's a lot of transferring there. What should Tampa do? Oh, well, I mean, if I were them, I would try to move up to get uh, either Bijan or Jameer Gibbs. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're laughing at, at running back. Okay. But, I could, I could see that happening. Um, we have to see what – I mean, their needs are a little bit different than other teams. Um, they have an interesting team. They have a lot of star power, um, but I wouldn't necessarily feel like they have a ton of, like, imminent needs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's really, really hard to say. Maybe you want to take a quarterback. Maybe. Um, maybe. Um, they definitely could upgrade at tight end. Definitely. So, I mean, here I actually think they're going to take the tight end, the best tight end available, um, Dalton Kincaid. That's what the the Buccaneers are going to take. Okay, they're going to take him at a at a Utah Dalton Kincaid. That's what I feel like the Buccaneers are going to take. Cool, cool. Um, now, so same thing with the Commanders. The Commanders could use the tight end as well because Logan Thomas is their number one tight end. Um, they have a huge need there. So now Miami forfeited their first overall pick in the tampering scandal. They're not picking until the second round the 51st overall pick. But with Miami, seems like they are going to stick with Tua. Made upgrades last season on defense. You know, still have one of the best dynamic duos in um, Ty- Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Yes. What could they do, do you think? And Mike Gisecki, um is a great tight end when um, used correctly. What could they do to uh, try to take the next step forward? Um, one, give me one second. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Mike Gusecki's on New England right now. He um he got traded actually right now. He got traded to New England. Wow, shoot. Um, 
Thank you for informing that. We learn something new every yeah, day. But, uh, yeah. Um, they're gonna Wait, be, is this a good chance they, to get a replacement for him yeah, if they want to go high at tight end? They're going to be in the upgrade for a tight end. Um, so, I mean, it, it's it's hard for me to say, um, but I feel like they're another team that could that could upgrade a tight end. Right now, their tight end depth chart or um, the depth chart of Miami, the depth chart's a little bit thin at tight end. <laughs> Since Kaseki got traded. Right hmm. now it's uh Durham Durham Smythe. Um so they're gonna be they're gonna be if Dalton Cut is unselected by um by Tampa, they're another team that could really maybe they could move up to select him. Or maybe they could get a Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame. Yeah, Michael Mayer would be a good selection. I have Michael Mayer would probably be a good selection for the for the um the Dolphins. Well, I will go with That's that. Michael they, Mayer. They, the Los Angeles Chargers. They're picking at 21. What would you do to improve that team? Um, I mean, I feel like they need another receiver for um for Justin Herbert. Yes, I, mean, I would not deny that. The LA Chargers, so is Mike Williams, but those guys are always hurt. Um it doesn't it that wouldn't help to get another playmaker for uh, Justin Herbert. Uh, mm-hmm. Boston Eckler too is kind of Pulling some some bullshit on his way out. Yeah, so he could be on his way out. But I mean, so yeah, I mean that's a hard thing to say. They also have problems in, in the secondary, um, mm-hmm. the Chargers. So kind of a hard team to to label who they're gonna pick. Uh, so I mean, there's a lot of mocks have them going. You know, it's hard. Yeah, and that's one thing. Through you know, this could all be a hundred percent different on Thursday, but you know that's what's fun about trying to speculate where things can go. But um, yeah, wide receiver they have a huge need, so um, they all miss significant amount of times. They all have old receivers, so they're gonna go. They're gonna go young, young, uh, LA Chargers. So, what do you, I would you feel say? Like a guy that hasn't been talked about a lot is um, Tank Dell. Uh, he may he may surprise people and get get select, selected a little bit high in this draft. So mm-hmm. that's another guy. Um, Jordan Addison they love from USC. He could be Quentin Johnson. So look for them to take uh Jordan Addison out of USC, a Southern California guy, um for uh to play in LA. All right, we'd like that connection. The Baltimore Ravens with their crazy off season, how could they uh make it even more crazy? Baltimore Ravens. Well, I mean, they just signed OBJ, so there isn't as much of a need quite yet for um for a wide receiver. Um, that being said, they need a edge rusher, an off- interior offensive line, and a corner. <coughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it never hurts to draft another receiver to go along with uh to go along with uh to go along with OBJ. That being said, it's a little hard when you don't really know who the quarterback is. Uh. Tyler Huntley, probably not the guy moving forward. So we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen there. You can never have too many weapons in this league, Hayden. The Minnesota Vikings are interesting. You know, a lot of people didn't take them seriously all year. You know, they did win their division, but ultimately got knocked out by the Giants. Uh, Kirk Cousins is on his final year of his deal. Do you think maybe this is a good chance to get his replacement? Um, I mean, I'm also hearing rumors that Trey Lance could go to the Minnesota Vikings. So, I mean, hmm. I'm hearing rumors of that. One thing we could agree, though, that Kirk Cousins won't be the quarterback. I mean, they had season. a horrible pass defense to the Minnesota Vikings last year. They got destroyed by Daniel Jones in the first round of the playoffs. It's pretty embarrassing because he's kind of a guy that, I mean, I like Daniel Jones, but, you know. So do you think this is a good chance to uh, get to add to that secondary? Then yeah, they're gonna patch up that secondary. Um, they would be stupid not to. They had one of the worst pass defenses in the league last year. Mm. Um, you know, so that's hard for me to say that they're not gonna go corner here. Um, I have them taking a the corner. I like it. I like it. Jacksonville. That is a, there's definitely a team to watch this season. Seems like Trevor Lawrence is here to stay on his way to that second contract. 
And um, what can they do to uh, get people more hyped down in Jacksonville? I mean, it's tough. I mean, I feel like they're starting to build something in Jacksonville. So, um, <laughs> drafting a running back would be very unnecessary here. I, they, they would be stupid to do that. So, they're not going to draft a a running back. Um, they have a good tight end group with uh, Evan Ingram, um, Luke Farrell. He's a good tight end. So, not too many needs. Maybe they maybe they draft a D lineman. Okay. That would be a good pick. Right here. The New York Giants. You know, they're coming off of Oh, the Giants a... got to get a receiver or an O-lineman. That's where you go. Do you yeah, think, I, would... I, I personally as the Giant fan, I really think they should get that weapon if they can, you know, add to it. Um, That was the big problem and miss with our wide receiver options. Um, you know, still find who could be that number one, you know, who could be the one that gets, who could be the weapons that could get Daniel Jones more 300 yard passing seasons. Wait, sorry. They need to add more weapons to give Daniel Jones more 300 yard gains. And, um, yeah, they also need that protection too. But if I'm going to go with it, I I like the TCU, uh, wide receiver. Yeah. Um, I like him too, but I feel like they're going to be getting Zay Flowers here from uh, Boston College. That could be a good option too, though. His height, he's a very small at only 5'9", but it seems like anything's possible. And Quinton Johnson could be selected later, so Actually, maybe they trade the up for him. It's uh, Zay Jones. Not not Zay Jones. Uh, hold on. Zay, Zay Flowers. Flowers? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'd have to see more of his film. But, you know, that's what I say. And then, you know, get... Daniel Jones, more options. Isaiah Hodgins is good. Sterling Shepard's going to return. Seems like Darius Slayton's going to be back. Um, you know, maybe in a perfect world, if the uh, even if the yeah, um, I just lost Richie James, so you know, yeah, and you know, even if they're going to maybe see who else is available. In a perfect world, maybe if you could somehow, if um the Rams are having this fire sale, I know they just signed one of their defensive players, but if Cooper Cup was a giant, that would be a dream come true. I'm not gonna count on it, but you know we have to clearly get these weapons for Daniel Jones. And after that, the Dallas Cowboys are picking at twenty six. Interesting move that they can go here. What do you say? Well, they've they've decided that uh that Tony Pollard's a guy at running back. They have Dalton Schultz. Um, I think they should go right here in another corner, but I mean that's hard for me to say. Um, it's tough. They're, they're kind of tough to evaluate. To be honest with you, um, they could go C. D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, and they have a lot of receivers right now. Um, so it it's kind of hard to say what they they specifically need. Um. I mean, yeah, I would say they they probably need a, a a right guard since they have they covered themselves at left guard, but they don't have a right guard, so probably a tackle would be a good selection. Good, good, I like or it. An, or uh, a D, or an OT or a DT would be a good selection for them. The Buffalo Bills picking twenty seven. What can they do? They have a clean slate. Demar Hamlin's coming back. Love to see it. This is a good chance to restart, but it's another year past when they should be making these deep runs into the Super Bowl. What's going on? Um, I mean, they need another receiver outside of Stephon Diggs. Um, Stephon Diggs is not going to carry them. The other supporting guest players around them have not stepped up. Yeah, it seems towards the end that um, it seemed towards the end too um, that Stephon Diggs wasn't getting those targets. That's what I would do. Take a receiver for Buffalo. Okay. I actually As, think Tank Dell, if they want to take a receiver, Tank Dell would be a good selection here. Tank Dell. Like it, like it. The Cincinnati Bengals will be next. They're picking 28th. What do you do with the Bengals? Um, I don't know. I mean, their defense was pretty good. Probably Jeff another offensive tackle to keep Burrow upright. 
Yes, and we know that that was always their Achilles heel. And especially in the postseason, it was tough to protect him. But you say get more protection for Joe Cool. I like it. I like it. After that, we have the New Orleans Saints, you know, via San Francisco, via Miami and Denver. But the Saints are picking 29th overall, trying to start a new era with Derek Carr. What do you do with the Saints? I mean, they're really – they're another team that's kind of thin at the safety position. They're a little bit thin, thin at safety, and they're also a little bit thin at wide receiver as well. Um, They have a lot of a, um, but Derek Carr, if they can get to their weapons up there, they have a chance to win the – chance to win the um the NFC South. Um, One guy that I feel like people aren't looking at enough is Elijah Higgins from uh, Stanford. He's a good wide All receiver. Right. He's – Six three and two thirty five. He's a huge physical specimen. Um, he's got great pure athleticism. Um, I mean, he's actually no, not not Elijah. Higgins. Never mind, never mind. That's way too, way too high to pick him. Um, but that being said, no, though he's he's way too high. Um, he's just the guy in the late rounds who I feel like they may be able to take. Um, in terms of twenty seven, the receiver that they should take at this position. All right. Let's probably take a receiver here. Um, just give me a just give me a second. Um, I said tanked out early. It was another guy. Um, Tyler Scott. They should draft you. He's a guy in the wide receiver position that I feel like he's gonna be drank drank high. Um, look for him and him. So Tyler Scott is a guy that I feel like. Um, or Jalen Hyatt. You know, I think this team, the reigning champion, Kansas City Chiefs, who are going to be picking thirty second overall. I think they need to look for some new weapons for Patrick Mahomes with the possible options you mentioned. Do you think there's anyone who is a good fit in Kansas City? Um, I mean, it's tough to say. Uh, maybe they could use another running back. That's that. That's yeah. It seems that really, Clyde is a big bust. I don't really love the uh the running backs right now that they have. That's that's actually one of I feel like their weakest their weakest link. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to say. Um, I'm not really exactly sure what they should do here. But, I mean, what do you think they should do in, with this pick? With the Chiefs? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think it would be a good option to try again and get a running back like you said. Personally, I still think they, they – um, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. You know, they do have – you know, they do have a core receiving coup. They do have a core receiving team, but – you know, Travis Kelsey is getting much older. Hardman's gone. Hill's gone. Juju Smith um, isn't there anymore, I believe, right? He's gone too. So I think, again, this is a good option to look for any of those receivers and um, try to find a solid running back in the second round if it were up to me. But, you know, the Chiefs are the Chiefs at this moment, and as long as Patrick Mahomes is still – a young man in his prime, anything can happen too. And, you know, one thing about the receivers, you could pick one off, you could pick one up in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, and they turn out to be stars or a third rounder like DK Metcalf goes in. That's the one interesting thing about the wide receiver position. Fundamentally, you don't really need to pick so high. You can find people who could catch the ball and run, but it's an interesting dynamic to find out there. But for me, you pick, you pick, having said all that though, you pick the best uh, weapon available and see if Patrick Mahomes could turn him into a star. And there's only three more teams left to discuss who aren't picking in the first round the Los Angeles Rams. Like I said, looks like they're uh, doing a fire sale and completely revamping. Matt Stafford seems to be your quarterback still at the moment, returning from injury. Sean McVay is coming back with all that speculation that he was gone. What do you do with the Rams? They're not picking for the, the first time they are picking is in the second round. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like they may be able to trade the pick. Um, mm-hmm. I actually think they're going to trade it. So that's just my take on it. Okay. You think they'll trade the 36 overall pick? Yep. Hmm. I think this is, you know, this team's really interesting. Seeing what McVeigh now does, you know, a lot of people, one of his criticism is, 
you know, despite he's coaching so well because he already went into a stacked system after he took over for what's his name, who was from Dallas. Um, like him right now, but it doesn't matter. But a lot of people criticize, you know, McVay saying he already had the talent around him. But now if he's really pretty much starting from scratch, what can he do? Do you still think the Rams can find success? You know, they are picking so late as a result of going all in, you know, two seasons ago to win the Super Bowl ultimately did work. But, you know, now it's just the repercussions of what happens when the team truly goes all in, at least when the Super Bowl. So it doesn't seem to be a hesitant problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think um firstly again, I still I think Matt Stafford is 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 towards the end. I think this would be a good chance to see if there's any um good quarterbacks left to pick. And um maybe even if Hendon Hooker isn't getting the respect he deserves according to you, maybe that'd be a good option to bring him in. Definitely. Definitely. That's what I would say there. The Cleveland Browns they're not picking until the third round, the 74th overall pick. Traded most of them in the D- Deshaun Watson deal. And uh, Cleveland Browns, what do you do there? Picking I mean, very they late. The to... They have the quarterback with, uh, with, um, with Watson. Deshaun Watson. Um, so Nick Chubb still seems to be still healthy. Yeah, I mean, it's tough pick to say. It's tough to say. Mm. What do you, what do you think what what options do you think they got at uh at their selection? Well, if I'm the Cleveland Browns right now, like it seems that the uh this is a good chance to maybe get a linebacker, see if you can replace the person they thought Javon Clowney was going to be. And again, this is a very late pick. See who was going to be available in the uh early third round, you know. You know, seeing some options there. We're going with, you know, just pulling up some options really quickly. And who could be left that can make some noise, whether it's Clemson's Trent and Simpson or Denyon Henley from Washington State, you know, Noah Sewell from Oregon or Mike Jones from LSU. This could be somebody, uh, a good chance to, you know, really rebuild from scratch, trying to get some dignity you know, still going with Deshaun Watson and the PR nightmare that will always be the case as long as he's still playing. If there's a good chance to try to at least get a stellar defense to um, even things out, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. And the last team we could discuss here, San Francisco 49ers. Again, they're pick- they're not picking until the 99th pick. You know, mostly as a result of the Christian McCaffrey deal. And... uh First of all, this is an interesting team to figure out what the heck they're doing. Trey Lance is on the block. Brock Purdy is not coming back anytime soon. Seems like they're going to see if Sam Darnold on his third team can he rejuvenate his career and make some noise with the San Francisco 49ers. Having said all that, you know, what, what are you going to do? Debo still there, Brandon Ayuka still there. Maybe this is a good chance to get a stellar tight end. You know, we'll see um, who's going to be George late Kittle. here. They have George Kittle. Yeah, you can see George Kittle. Maybe if they want to get a second one on there. Um, um, I mean, they should they should take a line. They haven't been able to protect their quarterback. Take a yeah, line. we saw exactly what happened when you didn't protect him. And then NFC Championship game, Brock Purdy getting destroyed out there. And, um, you know, when you have four quarterbacks in one season, still make it to the NFC Championship despite that, you definitely need some help. And, you know, go with your offensive line options is a good chance in the third round, whether that's, again, trying to pick late, assume maybe a, a Dewan Jones from Ohio State, Jalen Duncan from Maryland, Wanya Morris from Oklahoma. Definitely you need to get some protection. And do you think Sam Darnold is going to do well at all in San um, Francisco? I feel like you'll keep them afloat. I do. I don't know how good they're going to be, but they'll, they'll be afloat. Very interesting. He's got to stay healthy, which is a very big if for him. And yeah, any right. quarterback that's ever played for 49ers. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, Hayden, to see what that team does. It really, really will be. 
But we've gone through all 32 teams, and it's going to be a great draft. Let's see how far we come. Don't forget to check us out this Thursday, 8 p.m. on the Productive Conversations YouTube page. We are live streaming the NFL Draft, our second ever Productive Cast. Live streaming the NFL Draft first round at 8 p.m. Check it out here on YouTube, and then you could see it a few hours later, or I should say you could hear it a few hours later on all podcasting platforms. But check out our live stream for the Productive Conversations podcast uh, NFL draft live stream. So check that out on Thursday. Hayden, thank you so much for breaking this all down for us. We really appreciate you and we'll see you on Thursday. And then a week from today, we'll also see you as we talk more NBA playoffs, review the first round and um, look ahead towards the conference quarterfinals, the second round. Sounds but good. so far, so good. What do you think of the NBA playoffs? What do you, how do you think so they've been? been great. Think the Knicks are going to pull this off with the Cavs? I hope if the Knicks if the Knicks can uh can win this series, they got a chance to play Miami. So you know, oh, yeah. Then that's the other thing. It seems Jimmy Butler, you know, had the game on in the background. He's been tearing it up, you know, and you know, Giannis not being a hundred percent. Maybe Miami takes advantage of this. Yeah, definitely. And then the uh, definitely the other the the second best series to watch is definitely golden state and Sacramento going back and forth. And it seems like having the home court advantage for Sacramento might help them the most and some really yep. close games, but it's going to be a lot of fun that and more. We appreciate you Hayden. And um, we'll see you on Thursday again. Check us out Thursday, productive conversations, YouTube, as we live stream the NFL draft. All right. Yeah. Look forward to looking forward to that. All right, see you, Hayden.